Let's talk about um, DBA checks to use PESTA version 5. So this is kind of what we're going to talk about. Uh, maybe we'll do that. So this is me. Hooray. Woohoo. It's me. I'm the bloke the beard. Um, my pronouns are he and him. And basically these days I work as a consultant making stuff go. Well, automation, bicep, I'm in the Azure cloud world, generally data related. Once upon a time, I was a professional, professional production DBA. I wasn't a professional. I was a production DBA. And these days, um, you know, I, sit, I just do whatever people want me to do. And it's, it's kind of fun. Um, with Chrissy and Claudio and Jess, who I've seen here as well, we've written a book, Learn DBA Tools in a Month of Lunches. So most of us will say, when people say, I want to learn PowerShell, we'll say, go use Learn PowerShell in a Month of Lunches. And DBA Tools has about 73 billion commands these days. So we couldn't fit all of them into a book, but it was a good way to get people going and get people moving. And also, we wrote it with the idea of people being able to learn how to get comfortable with PowerShell at the same time. Um, on there, you can find out how to get in touch with me. You have questions, come and shout at me. Have ideas for PSConf for you? Please come and talk to me about those as well. Um, it's all going to get very exciting. So why? Start with why, which is a bit odd, really, because normally we start with what, but we're going to start with why. So why a dev container? Uh, why did we use it? What, 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 were, what was the reason for doing this? And basically, you know, it, it comes down to this because, you know, what happens is we write some stuff, uh, whether it's an open source module or whether it's something that we're going to give, you know, to a client or whether it's just something we've written for another member of our team. And they're like, yeah, great. It, it works here, but... Uh, Seeing as you said it only worked on your machine, well, guess what? We just we just thought we'd take it away and go and give it to the people that it worked on. And this is what happens. And the reason that this happens is because we're not just working with a lump of code. We've got other dependencies or we put other things on it or the system that it's running on has something there. And the same thing happens when you look at updating this module. And that's what this is going to be about. We're talking about updating um, DBA checks. And when we came to think about doing that, it's really important that we make sure that everything is the same for everybody that's doing this work. Because databases are important. And so making sure that, in, that, that DB, DBA checks is working correctly against databases is very important. Um, if we're going to do a big change and we, we need to do a big change to work with PESTA v5, then we want to make sure that we're doing everything right. So this is a reason why we use dev containers, because it's no good me having stuff change and then somebody else coming along and saying, well, I'm trying to work with it. It doesn't work for me. Because then, you know, you're just going to get, well, you get Samuel L. Jackson coming and say, well, it, it works on my machine just one more time. And then say it. Say it works well on my machine one more time. And this is the thing that we want to fix with dev containers. And I think it does it brilliantly. I've been using them a lot with um, teams of, of people, helping them work with stuff. I've done uh, pre-cons with Jess Pomfret with them. We are doing another one next, next month with them uh, i think they're really good and we worked hard on using dba checks like this and the idea of a dev container is that everybody has the same experience simples and this is kind of how it works we're going to use vs code um vs code looks like that so you've got your vs code server it's sat doing its work and it's got the themes it's got the ui extensions underneath on your storage you've got your source code 
which of course you're hosting in some sort of source control repository because that's what we do. We're writing code, we look after it, and that's how we work. And the thing is with that picture is that I could put in you know, the bearded color themes or um, .NET 6.7.3.2.1 and Jess could come along with Git Graph and Claudio could come along with something different. And each time our environment is just ever so slightly different. So what we do is we have a dev container. And a dev container still has the VS Code server bit, still can have all of the extensions. So we can just make sure we have just the extensions we want in here. Um, all the settings. So, you know, should, um, should curly braces be on the same line or should they be on a different line? Well, we can decide what they are for our project and we can set that as our setting in our dev container. And we just do auto format on, <laughs> yeah, auto format on save. And then when Jess writes hers on the same line, it'll auto format it and put it on the next line. If that's what it is that works. So it works in two ways. It means that Jess can carry on being comfortable doing her coding on the same line, but we can keep our um, thing, everything all the same. And we don't have a, um, uh, we don't have a commit that is basically a load of formatting where the, the braces are moving up and down all the time. And then within that container, we're going to have all of our PowerShell because we're we're working in PowerShell. We're going to have all of our applications because we're working against SQL uh, instances, and we're going to have its own internal file system. But our source code still lives on our machine, still lives in the same place, connected to source control, of course, but on our own machine. We just mount it as a um, as a volume mount within a container, and we don't have to worry about you know making sure we write Docker and use the right image and all of these things. We can just leave it and let it take care of it itself. Um, and that's where I'm going to stop with that slideshow. There's some more bits there, but. I don't think they're really important right now. I'm going to show you instead the problem. And here is the problem that we have. So if we start with, no, let's do it from here. No, no, let's do it in a brand new session because we don't quite know what we've got loaded in that one, Rob. So we'll start here and we'll just, um, we'll get our module pester. No, we haven't got anything. So let's, we go. Let's import uh, pesto, and now we've got 5.3.2 in place. And if we um, import DBA checks as well, DBA checks is going to do its import. It's also going to import DBA tools. It's also going to import um, PS framework. And now, as you can see, we've downgraded our pester we've taken out of its session and we've had to put it into place and that means that we can do something like this so we're just going to do a quick check just to make sure that our instance is up and running and you see that looks like pester it's pester version 4 we're just doing an instant connection and i would use this when oh no something's gone wrong can you make sure the estate is back up and running well, I can just pass a check of instance connection against a whole list of um, instances and poof, it will just go and do everything and we'll get through. Now, as you might imagine, what we've got to do is some horrid. Yeah, literally the comment says, nasty rotten way to fix Pesta V5 engines because we've got to make sure we've do we have the version? Okay, we've got the version. We've got to remove the version. We've got to find a compatible version. We've got to make sure we get it loaded. You might not have it installed, so we've got to try and get it. And you can imagine it works perfectly all of the time. And the reason for doing that is because if we open a new session and we, instead of importing that DBA check, we'll import a DBA check of a version about when stuff went wrong. And we will import a version of PESTA. Uh, let's try 5.0.0. .0. 
And now when we try and run, what we get is boof, bang, straight away. There was a problem executing invoke pester. Parameter cannot be found at Manchester's parameter name script. So pester v5 is amazing. But when we wrote DBA checks, which is a framework of configuration and checks for our SQL instance, we were using um, pester v4. And that was rolled back to before Pester even really existed, when I used to use um, PowerShell to validate green is good, red is bad about my estate. And I would just loop through and I just do for each, for every instance in this list, just go and check stuff. This is the stuff we need to check at that time. And that's the evolution of um, DBA checks. It started from that original hand cranked thing into something where we used PESTA, into DBA checks where we were then going to start using configuration and we're going to use V4 and it was all a big load of work. Now, even if I get around this thing about the parameter, because of the way that we have the checks, I think if we are in here, oh, we are good. So our PESTA tests, if we look at this, here they are, we just go and grab all of our instances and then we start doing a for each. And PESTA v5 doesn't work like that. It just, it just doesn't understand what's going in here. It can't pick up all of the configuration and it doesn't work. So let's get rid of that, close that. We don't want that. It's not gonna do what we want. So we've got a dev container. And in our dev container, we've got a bit of Docker. So our Docker, if we control K, control zero, you can see we've got three SQL containers. Well, you can't see that. You can just see that there's three containers. But these three containers are special ones that we've written for DBA checks. So they've got SQL installed, they've got databases, and they've got users, and they've got certificates, and they've got all sorts of bits that we need. So we control. So we know what our environment is. So we are absolutely, everybody who is running this is now running against the same three SQL instances with everything that we want. Woohoo! Everything's good. And as well as that, if we look at our dev container, you can see that we have um, our local workspace folder. We have our connection into DBA checks one. We've got our rules. So we've got, you know, bracket care, pair colorization is enabled. We, we're gonna render our white space. We're gonna have a ruler at a hundred. We can put all of these things in that we want to have. We're gonna have code formatting set to OTBS because that's what we want. And then we're gonna have, uh, we have format on save. I thought I had format on save, but maybe not. Anyway, we've got all of these things that we can, we can set up. And then we can make sure we've got all the same extensions. So we're gonna just have the same control of extensions to make sure that we're seeing what is going through. So that's good, excellent. So there is another problem with our um with our checks if we go and have a look at if we go and have a look at our checks where are our checks rob they would be there under c uh if i pick something like um the original database checks and you can see what we do here is loop through some instances and then we create a SMO instance with DBA tools. And then we go through and we get a config value for our collation. And then we run our test DBA collation. So for every database, we have to go back and do another connection to our instance, which is fine on three instances in some containers. On 10,000 instances on somebody's estate, or on an instance with two or 5,000 databases on, this is really, really slow. So as well as making sure that we were gonna use PESTA version five, one of the reasons for doing that is because it's quicker. 
Another reason is because more people will have it installed these days and we don't have to go through that fluff with scopes and things. Um, we also wanted to improve the performance of our code and bring in some standardization. But how can we make sure that we're, we're doing that? So when we load our dev container and we load DBA checks one, DBA checks one has got some stuff really know what what's going on in any of this but actually if we look at our containers when we load our container we install a load of things but we also copy our profile file across to dbhx1 and we make sure we put it into the PowerShell file. So it's going to be the same PowerShell directory. So it's there for anybody that opens it. And this one has a load of stuff in it. It imports TBA tools. It sets some values. It puts in a password. Don't ever use convert to string. In fact, don't ever use this password. Yeah, it's crazy talk. But we have it in to make everything look the same. We remove some items. We make sure we've got everything we want. And we have this magical, where does it start? Oh, Jess, this function. <laughs> it's not there. We've got a function. That's because it's in that one, Rob. We've got a function here that is um, in our module that's going to see what's going on. And we're going to use um, Jacob doesn't just have um, great work with Pesto. He's also got the great work with this thing called Profiler. Profiler will show you some performance, uh, allows you to do comparisons. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use that. So let's start at the beginning. And we will start with some code. Uh, we're going to run a clear screen for one reason only, and that's because Jess wrote this cute little thing for our um, pre-con, and it makes me laugh every time. You just get Pac-Man chasing the ghosts across. Pac-Man lives on, absolutely. So we're gonna make sure we're on the right branch of our code, and we're gonna start a new session because that means we don't have to worry about anything. So you see, when our profile loads, what it's doing is it's actually importing our module with verbose mode. Now, normally you wouldn't do that, of course, but we want to see what's going on. We want to make sure if we make a change, make sure we're working with our function, we want to make sure it's all going to load. So that's, that's our code. We just looked at that because I can't remember the order to do things in. And we're going to do some checks. And we're going to add this little perf detail. Whilst it's running, you're going to get some output. And this output looks different from what we had before we're outputting some of our configuration so we can see what's going on and then the rest of the outputs coming out of profiler telling us what's happening so if we come back to this while this one runs you can see that what we do is we've split our code path between version 4 and version 5 because it seemed to me to be the easiest way to to do this and we've added in a little legacy parameter we said, all right, we'll have legacy, then go down the V4 code. And we've set a variable, don't judge me. Don't forget we're running Pesto inside Pesto and scopes are hard. So we're having this global one. It's only here in these containers. It doesn't really live in proper code. And then we use trace script. And trace script is part of the um, profiler module. And we'll say, right, so with original code trace, I'd like you to run trace script with the first block of code and with the new code trace we'll do the same with the second block of code and then we can see how long it takes to run so we can make sure we're going faster hey that's a good thing we can make sure we're going faster but here's another thing we need to see we also need to validate that the results we're getting there are the same so as we start changing things we want to make sure that if before we had three pass tests that afterwards we also have three pass checks. Because if we've messed up our code so it doesn't work correctly, 
people's databases are not going to be in the right place and this is not something that we want to do so we validate how long it takes to run and then we compare that we've got the right tags so here's another thing that you can do with your dev container is you can make sure that when you're coding when jess is coding when claudia is coding when rob's coding what we can do is we can make sure that we have the same number of tags because if we don't have the same number of tags what we get is a little message that says um where is it uh, that was really silly to do there we go so the most common reason is you've used tags instead of tag in your described block and that was a little presentation change that we did to make sure that we were always using v5 code in the v5 folders so this is what it's done so let's have a look let's see what we've got oh look at that that looks like some profiler code to me so we've run our code and we've run our checks against three sql containers and with the original code it takes 20 seconds with the new code it takes 9.16 excellent that's good so um it's running in 45 percent of the time um the tags are the same good and all of our tests have run the same the results are the same passed are the same failed are the same everything is the same so let's have a look at what's made it slow when we have a look at this line 40 has got this mob on it um and it's taking 27 percent of the time so you know maybe two two and a half seconds of that is spent doing this so okay well where does that come from go back to my demo make sure i'm not going too far ahead of myself um da, 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 da. yeah we go yep so if we have a look at this you can see we've got it in get dbc config um so how does get dbc config get into these so when we run a check what we do is we um load a pester test and look at the tags and if the tags match the ones that we've asked to do so in that first example it was instant connection and when if it matches that then we're going to run those checks and it goes through and if we look in here for config oh no let's look for dbc config 29 times rob what are you doing seemed like a great idea if we had skip equals get dbc config value skip for whatever and we can decide whether we're skipping things because some versions of sql don't have certain um, options or you know there are other reasons we want to do that oh mate this is crazy it's slowing us down so we had that um so that's all of those um and the other thing whilst we're talking about performance is that this is my new get it was a joke one day jess is going to tell me that i have to change this and just call it get all instance info but new get is is just funny to me so before our discovery what we do is we get our check information so we find out what tags we have in effect on our uh that are required for our run and then we still do our get instance for for each to make sure we've got a compatible list and then we go through and we run this we pass in our instance and our tags and get some information because rather than going backwards and forwards to keep going to get it we thought well if we go to the instance once and then bring all our information back and then run our checks against it that's many 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 less checks against um that uh, travel backwards and forwards to our instance and the other thing we did is we went and looked at our smo and the thing with smo smo stands for sql management object it's the dot net object representation of our sql instance and we can define our init fields so that's what information that we get don't go to the instance and bring us back stuff we're not interested in so we actually just go and set a load of these things to nothing so we'll have an instance just to, just 
don't bring us back anything until we say, right, let's go and get, um, you know, we, we need this. So we can check the version. We need to have version major. Um, what else have we got written in here? We need to log ins. If we're doing logins, we'll, we'll, we'll add those in. These are our defaults. And then we do a switch depending on our uh, check. So if our check has got something in it, um, maybe for scan for startup procedures disabled, we need to go and um, add in to our init fields store procedure because we're going to run a store procedure. Okay, so we can go and grab that that information. And oh look, twenty two times we run get dbcc config again. So that's crazy. So one of the first things we did in amongst making sure that we had just started to think about reducing the number of calls back to the instance to get the information, uh, standardizing the way some of the checks are running was to remove these calls to the DBC um, config because profile is showing us that this is not working as well. So we'll check out another branch of our code. Um, we'll come back in here and now we have replaced it. So what we've got is get dbcc config is expensive. So we call it once at the beginning of this file. This was my first idea because I wasn't thinking straight. And we'll set it to a variable within our script. And this time it means that now we have got, uh, if I do that, no, if I do that, one dbcc config. Everything else has been replaced, so one call. And in here, we've got no dbcc configs. Excellent. This is a much better idea, because in here, we can now just look for our variable and find our values from it. So, of course, the fastest code is code that you don't run. Awesome. So let's see what happens. We will now run that. Same checks. And this is the process that we would use as we went along. And the idea about this is that anybody can do it. So now anybody can start to come and help come through, make our code quicker, update our tags. We've got a project on our GitHub. And that means that we can start running through what's happening. We, as we move forward, we're going to take away all of this output because we don't need it. You know, well, why have we got it now? Isn't that going to invalidate your checks? Well, no, not really, because it's going to be the same every time it runs. So we're going to have an additional um, improvement when we remove it, of course, but we're actually going to um, have the same impact each time. So let's skip ourselves back up here. And so if you remember last time, it was about nine and something seconds, and now it's down to 7.8 nine seconds so now it's running in 39 percent of the time instead of 46 47 percent of the time oh it's cool and we'll have a look at the slowest code and this time we've got get dbcc check in our process we've got this okay so that's that's what we had there um okay so we've got we've got that um we're going to copy this one and we'll put it in here. And uh, oh, good work, Rob. That didn't copy very well, did it? Let's copy it from this instead. There we go. So we'll copy that there and get DBCC check. Here we go. Line 57. See, that's actually pulled out. And what we've got is this. So we get a content from our checks JSON file, and then we spit it out to a string and we convert it from JSON so that we can then make use of it as we move all of our checks along. So we'll also see if we do that, <laughs> lo and behold, we've got another get dbcc config value floating around. So we want to want to be getting rid of that one as well. We want to want to move move that. So this time, what we did, if we check out demo three, and then we have a look at our 
thing we've got rid of our dbcc config and if we go to line 57 what we've done is we've changed from our out string to a raw because this is much quicker you know these are the lessons that we've learned in the five years or so since this code has existed and um, and a load of more places yeah i'm not going to go and have a look at those so we're going to load powershell again in this session so we get the new updated version and we'll start running our checks and then you can use source control and you can compare let's compare uh let's compare a branch come on then we'll compare demo two with demo three and what you'll find is that we had a load of updates so in dbcc check there's our dbcc config value there's our out string we actually found in get dbc config value well why do we call get dbc config in there as well it'd be much better if we put it into uh where did we put it i thought we put it into the module import we'll just set that this variable here and then we can just pull this out every time so you see there's lots of places where we fixed these config values and move them away excellent so let's see what results did we have this time scrolly 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 this time we ran in about six and three quarter sec seconds so we've come down from 9.6 ish to 7.8 ish to 6.7 so the the results you know the improvements are getting getting smaller but we're now down to 37 percent of the time everything else is the same we still look at our slowest code and now it's a ps item where object hmm. I wonder what that's going to be so what else do we do um i think we we've stopped there for improvements but we've enabled anybody to be able to come through and create us new checks because we're going to keep moving checks into this process we can just run our um, function that jess wrote gives us the comparison make sure that all the results are the same checks of the performance and we can start maybe looking for things that within the checks themselves that uh, are more uh, easier to to catch up with so one thing we found here we've got our what are we looking for how many times do we get we could not believe this this was absolutely astonishing we ran <laughs> just in this one file we do get dba sp configure 11 times so you know again there's a repeated trip backwards and forwards to an instance so if we had all 11 of those tags in place uh it would be 11 journeys to the instance and back to go and get the sp configure and take it back again so it's just it was crazy we're looking at our instant text uh oh it's only two there's only two because i couldn't go back far enough I'm sure in our chat we had it was a it was a lot more. We talked about SMO and init fields earlier on. So we could have a new check. So if we look, we're in instance.tests. So this is a v4 code. And we're going to look for our login audit failed, like it says in your demo, Rob, because that's how things help. Here is our old style of a code. So we would do um this is all inside a great big for each loop and um, we would do a skip if we needed one we would then check if an instance was contactable because if you're running 180 checks you don't want to keep going back to an instance that you know is not available we just add it into a not contactable list now we do that beforehand and then we say well we have a context we have an it block and then we have an assertion um, function to go and do our check and the other part of this is that when Claudio wrote the power bi file to show the results in a beautiful fashion it relied on some string passing which meant that we had to make sure that we had the same thing here 
and the same thing uh, and the same thing here and if we have a look at that database we had to put database in and this drove Gianluca Sartori absolutely bonkers so one of the updates I did was to change this so we could store the results in a database and we pass our pester object and take out all of the things munch them so that we've got nice good data and then we've got a, a new power bi that we can use on that but we still need to have our naming convention in the correct way so our instance assertion is for our log it audit failed um it goes and gets a dba instance property so if we move that same code straight into our v5 and we've changed it a bit we've got a for each here instead of inside the loop we've improved our skip and now we're just getting a result out of our new get all instance info and that is what we're running the check against if we have a look at that it's just going to look exactly the same um there we go so we're just going to pull everything through so this is the first step we would take when adding a new check and what we would then do is we would run just that one check and then we would run perfect validate check we'll just have a quick run through that it won't take very long and when we have a look we can see that firstly we've got <laughs> we've got a failure uh secondly um the most common reason is you've used tags instead of tag in your block mm. yep that's uh, probably exactly right but that happened all the time so by adding it into our function that we used to check it meant we could just get that quickly get that response back oh yeah we've done it again there we go so we'll look at our next one and this time uh nope we will instance v5 tests we now have tag instead of tags and did i run that let's see let's run that again anyway and we'll run our tests so now we're going to be making sure <laughs> I, the, the, yeah the problem is chrissy i forget sometimes whether i'm meant to intentionally fail that one or not which i did for a minute then <laughs> like um <laughs> So we come back and this time, there we go. Our tags are the same, our tests passed and run, failed are all the same. And it ran in, oh, it ran in 4.57 seconds and the original code ran in 3.89. And that's something that we also get um, that, that happens here. Um, just with the odd one test. If you're just running one check, sometimes it will just take just a little bit longer. But let's have a look and see what's the most expensive thing. It's the get DBA instance property. Okay. So sometimes DBA tools is not the answer. Now we make use of DBA tools as much as possible, but oh, okay, open up over there. Great. Um, but what we do when we can't use dba tools is go and use dba tools and by that i mean we go to dba tools function the get dba instance property and we find that we do all of this stuff to get our instance property because dba tools uh, function is doing is for other things in this case we just want this one login or failed function and we can see that we get that here with our settings properties that's where it comes from and our settings come from um, further up we'll have a look because i'll do it over here so if we come to this we can now see in our new git um new get all instance info function what we do when we want login auto fail instead of running get dba instance property is we just add an init field for audit level for our settings and we say to that so when you go to smo just grab that pull it back 
And that means that this time when we run the code, oh, I didn't load it. Let's try that again. Let's load it. That's why we put that there. Otherwise, we don't load our modules. And when we run it this time, what we're going to get is should be about the same. It, it seems to be 101% sometimes. Let's see what we get. Oh, look at that. Typical, of course. New code runs in 89% of the time. So it's just 10% quicker this time. So that, that's cool. And the fastest code is now... Uh, sorry, the slowest code is now in PESTA, so I'm not worried about that. Please hold, call up. Come here, little cat. Unfortunately, you have to wait because this little monster decided that he had to be part of the show. Um, so PESTA is the slowest part in running just one code, so that's okay. We would normally just run more than one. And that will be quicker. And then my last, what are we at? 1841. Look at this. It's going to come in through. So there we are. When we do seven checks, it's running in 61% of the time. So we're always making these improvements. One check, sometimes a bit slower, but many checks, always much quicker. And one of the things we've got in uh, DBC Check is the ability to run. Yes. So every single configuration is available as a dynamic parameter. So we, if you think in PESTA terms, we have our tests with our tags. And the tags are what we would call a check. So an instant connection or a, an agent file job or whatever that might be. And then we have some configuration because we might want to know if an agent job has failed in the last hour or the last six hours or the last day or the last month and let people decide how they want to, at what point they want the, the check to fail. And in the beginning, we thought people would run that a lot at the command line. And we, um, well, Fred, with PS Framework, created these dynamic parameters. That means they're just going to pick up all of the configs that we've got and load them here of income available for people um which is really cool but if you remove it then it comes out way quicker because we don't have to do any of that work when we're loading our profile or when we're starting our uh, invoke dbc check we don't have to do any of that dynamic parameter work and the vast majority of the time that people are doing the work, this is a script that's running overnight or it's running in a, an agent job or it's running in an Azure function or whatever it might be. So we don't actually need these dynamic parameters. So we can make some changes that are going to be breaking changes, and that's okay as long as we tell people. So now for those two checks we've got from nearly 70% of the time down to 51% of the time. And I think if we ran the original uh, I don't know, 15 or 20 checks, we'd be down to around about 35% of the time. So that's the sort of improvement in runtime that we're getting. And this is a process that we've used to do it. And lastly, what I would like to say is if you want to help, then come to the data platform community, come to DBHX, and there is a project, and the project in Project Classic, I don't know why, is here. Here are our work, this is what we're doing. You can see for instance level, I've done 25 out of 56. Uh, for database level, Jess has done 14 out of 48. For agent, Claudia has done three out of 13. We've done lots of other things as well. But what we would like people to do, if you've got the time, if you want to, come and check out the repository. There's a PESTA v5 branch. That's where all of this magic is happening. And what we will do is um, help you, but you will have a dev container that you can just run. As long as you've got Docker on your machine and VS Code, and you'll be able to run through 
do all of those changes. Use profiler to start improving your code, runtime, um, use, use Pester to make sure that everything is um, available and working in the same way, and we can build something great. Because there's a question that we've been having amongst ourselves, so um, Jess and Claudio and I, is do we release DBA checks with half of these checks ready? Because we'll just have a legacy um, parameter, which could be default. So everybody else's code would still work. If you wanted to use a new code, you'd have to specifically choose the legacy. And I don't think any of the um, code paths would be wrong. We'd have to check, but I don't think any of the code paths would, would, would not work. So do we start that and then let it gradually improve? And the next release will be that we've added these many checks or do we try and knock off all of these ones that we've got already because we might find some performance improvements which might alter a load of stuff do we wait just in case now i don't have the answer i kind of spin between one and the other now and again i'm happy for people to help but absolutely this is a process that we're doing. We'd love you to come and help. If you have any questions, please come and ask. I saw that Jess was answering questions in the um, in the repo. Yeah, no, Jakob, we definitely don't want a PR alias for tag <laughs> because that's still still running into our uh, into our other. So it's very specifically as a uh, enabling us to have v4 or v5, like like Jess has said in the chat. So anybody got questions? Come up to the front and um, uh, go to the Q&A and feel free to ask them or ask them in the chat or otherwise we're going to have to get Shane to come up and, and talk to us. Uh-oh, Jakob's coming. Hey, buddy. Hey, thanks for the presentation. It was really cool. Um, from what I understood, you didn't release this yet, right? on version five yeah we haven't we haven't released yet it's literally just on on this branch okay because my question was if you have like some additional metrics because from what i understood this was kind of uh like a micro benchmark so if you would see the similar 50 percent increase in speed on like all the checks but since you didn't release that doesn't make any sense um so jess or claudia will correct me if i'm wrong but um we've we've certainly been looking it's about 40 percent um increase 40 in, percent uh, of the time is spent with version 5 code but not all of those not all of that improvement is from the pesta v4 to v5 change some of it is from smo some of it is from reducing the um trips to the um instance um, <laughs> Yeah, obviously, I was mostly like focusing on what could possibly profiler bring you. And the other thing is, do you see some uh, pieces of Pester pop up often um, in your profiler lists? Because I saw get assertion operator. I was only optimizing it on the Pester test itself. So if you see some things pop up often, maybe there's some additional work to be done. Yeah, I mean, for certain, um, yeah, get assertion operator was the the one where when we got to it it was like right we've done as much as we can within our module that one is then then in pesta but it was a it was a small percent um of the time let's let's pull it back up here it's somewhere so in the realms of diminishing returns so if we do that and reload that one my guess is it's going to be here. Um, thank you also for um, for Profiler. Profiler has made this so simple to use. And so many times that, that, that we've just gone, oh, of course, this, you know, the, the, um, the convert from JSON is using, you know, it wasn't using raw, so it was really slow. And it was like, of course, but unless you have it, coming up in in your face so you can see it you you wouldn't notice 
No, this would be brilliant. Yeah, I'm glad you're benefiting from it because this was exactly the reason why I wrote it. So we can see it easily like that. Yeah. yeah I just wanted to say if you see some additional pieces of Bester pop up quite often, um, maybe we can optimize it further because I was only testing it on like profiling the Bester tests themselves, not other repos. So maybe in real life, there are some other places. It, the one that is always the one that I see first when I'm when I'm going through through, through a list. That's always it's always that one. But but yeah, mainly mainly it's our code, honestly. <laughs> Anybody else? What else have we got to get? Uh, thank you, Anders. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shane. Uh, Wolfgang, um, <laughs> DBHX is a great help on ancient SQL installations. It certainly is. It, it certainly really is. So, any more for any more? Any more questions? If there are no more, then um, please feel free to go and play with the go-karts or cards or poker or any of those things that are there. Um, thank you so much. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in real life in um, in Prague and also looking forward to um, seeing you at the user groups if people start taking care of that. Thank you.